to the channel. Now underneath this uh, layer of mold and stuff, I think is a beautiful piece of sapili. It's either sapili or mahogany, but I'm starting to lean towards it being sapili. Uh, we might be able to get a better idea later on when we get it on the lathe. Now we're going to stick with the theme of inlays and we're going to do a copper inlay. This is uh, about a two mil copper wire I've bought and I'm thinking this will sit beautifully in the edge of this. Now it's not going to be a bowl, I think it's going to be a vase. So imagine a beautifully curved vase, slightly tapering towards the top and then copper in the rim. So the first thing to do is to get this on the lathe. So I think we're going to put a face plate on here, set it on, get it round and start turning. Now, this is quite a big chunk of wood. So I am going to use tailstock support at the start until we get it round. Sharpen up and we'll get started. Not far off round. I started to curve the bottom edge, which we need to, because I just wanted to get a better look at the grain. And uh, I'm starting to edge towards uh, it's neither Sapili or Mahogany, it could be Oroko. Uh, please put your uh, opinions in the uh, comments below. It's one of the three. So we've got either Mahogany. Sapili or Iroko. I'm starting to think Iroko. Especially this grain colour. Right, so I'm gonna, I think from about there, have it curve in nice and gently. And then from there upwards, again, just taper in slightly. Okay, handy tip to help you create a long gradual taper is just to angle the tool rest in on a similar angle to it that you want the taper to be and then you can just rule the t run the tool along and it will slowly create that shape for you. getting somewhere near the desired shape. So I need to start thinking about the bottom. So I'll start sorting that out now. Okay, to make the sorting out the base a little bit easier for myself, I'm gonna take the tailstock away now. I'm fairly sure that we're gonna be fairly solid enough, but I will go with caution just in case.
Now I've got the base where I want it. I can just spend a little bit of time refining this curve, getting rid of a couple of these tool marks. And then we're ready for sanding. to 600 grit. Now, like all, or well, like a lot of African hardwoods, uh, Iroko, as I believe this is, uh, has a very, very open grain structure, which would mean that it might take really, really nicely to a bit of embellishing wax. So, I think we'll give it a go. We're putting copper in the rim so a bit of gold embellishing wax may help set off the whole thing. Now with embellishing wax you don't go on with sealer first because obviously sealer is just going to close all the pores and it won't go in. It's fairly subtle but it certainly helps pop the grain. Buff this in and see how it looks. Oh, I think it's time to turn this around and get it hollowed out. Okay, we've got it turned around. I'm going to start hollowing this out, but to make life a little bit easier, we are going to go in with a force a bit to clear out a lot of the wood first before we start going in with any tools. Now I'm just going to put a mark in with my live centre. Sorry, yeah, with my live centre, just so I know where I'm going to hopefully go in with the force a bit. Right, I'm not going to go in with a huge force and a bit first. I'm going to go in with a smaller one. And then when, that, when that's at the base, I'm going to go in with a larger one. Just to put less pressure on the wood. Right, okay. I put some tape on the force and a bit as well. That's going to give me an idea so I know how deep I am and when to stop. Now we can start hollowing out. Now, as that's turning, there's just a slight wobble on the edge. So that a millimeter out. And I may just adjust that a little bit later on before we put the inlay in. So it doesn't look like it's too close to one edge as opposed to another. Okay, before I start to hollow out, I am gonna quickly sort out this slight wobble I've got. So I think I'm going to try and change the profile just from about there upwards. So I've just set my tool rest as I did before to get the angle on. And I'm just going to be doing some very, very light straight cuts, like sheer cuts across until we get rid of it.
That should do it. Right, now to help hollow out, don't worry about this, I'm going to refinish it at the end. Uh, to help hollow out, I'm just going to turn the headstock outwards again so I can get in there an awful lot easier. So I'll do that and then, as before, I'll reposition the cameras so you can see clearly. That's about there. I'm going to spend a bit of time cleaning up this mess. I'll get this back into position so we can start cutting the uh, inlay. <coughs> right, I was going to cut the inlay first uh, and then sand, but because the sanding is uh, going to be fairly extensive, I was going to, uh, it'll probably change the profile of the edge here. So where I initially cut in the center, it may be closer to the inside once I've finished sanding. So I'm going to do the sanding first and then I'm going to cut the inlay. Right, because my extraction for sanding is there, I'm going to turn this back around so I can get as much of the uh, dust out as possible whilst sanding. If you know a good way of hollowing out, uh, sorry, of sanding deep things, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know a better way. Right, we're going to cut the inlay for the copper. And the copper wire we have is two mil thick, which is incidentally the same thickness as the parting tool. Well the parting tool is just a fraction less but that will work in our favour. Now what I want to try and do is cut a hole the same depth as the wire so I brought a, a sharpie with me and I'm just going to make a mark on here the depth we need to cut into. Right that'll give me a good guide. I'm going to cutting in with the point down, sorry, the handle up and the point down, because obviously that's quite th thick there, and that'll start affecting the depth of the hole. So I'll just move my tool rest away a little bit so I can get in there and do it properly. Now, instantly, as I'm, that's cutting, it seems to be wider than the tool. Right, I'm going to cut this and if I need to put some filler in then I'll figure that out in a second. Yeah. That's not good. As I thought when the tools going in, it's <laughs> the base of the tool because it's so wide is making the hole even wider. So what I need is something very very short, sorry something very very pointy but not very deep to cut this in. What have I got? Okay. 
I've got an old parting tool which I wasn't using anymore and I've reground the tip to be our new tool. So I'm gonna have to, unfortunately, we're gonna have to lose the top bit of this bowl. But nobody will ever know. They won't suddenly look at this bowl and think, wasn't that meant to be longer? And we're gonna have another go. those in a second. Right, let's make another mark on for the centre. We'll have a go with our new tool. Right, let's see if this works. elegant but it worked better than before all right I think I'm gonna to have to set this in with a bit of resin or something right, I'm gonna pour some CA glue in here tap this in carefully and then we're going to leave it to set. Gives me a good chance to actually use out this black CA glue I got from O3A. I sent it over to, for me to have a go at. And I know in America you've got a very, very popular CA glue that you all seem to use, but it's very, very hard to get hold of in the UK. And it's also very expensive as well. Right, okay, now I'm going to tap this in and hopefully it'll push the CA glue out and surround it. Gloves. I'm not going to put any activator on it at all for a while. I'm just going to let that sit and then we'll come back to it in an hour or so and see what it's like. Okay, we're back on the lathe. This has had a good long while to sit and dry. So we've got to turn this back. Now I've turned back metals before without too much of a problem and uh, copper isn't the hardest uh, material around. So we should be all right, but I'm just gonna go in with an old carbide to start off with, just to start taking this lip down. start sanding. We've sanded pretty much everything else so it's just this rim we need to worry about now. Just put on a bit of Yorkshire grit at the end, just to help bring it up to a nice shine. Right, so I'm gonna give it a good dousing over with some isopropyl. And then we shall put on the uh, gold embellishing wax, and then we're done. Okay, it's had long enough to dry. So 
So I'm going to go on again with the gold embellishing wax. Okay, right, we're going to buff this up and then we'll take a look at what we've done. Let's take a look. And there we go, that's what we've ended up with. Our beautiful vase inlaid with copper. We had a bit of trouble cutting the inlay for the copper, uh, but it was a first attempt, so I'm sure it's gonna go a lot smoother next time. Uh, the wood itself, initially we thought it was either mahogany or sapili, but then obviously once we turned back the horrible mess on the outside, we realized it wasn't that, and it looks more like Iroko. It could also be Aphromosia. Uh, if you've got any experience in this area, then please let me know your opinions in the comments below. I would love to hear what you think. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe. And if you leave a comment below, like what kind of wood it is, then you're gonna be entered into the giveaway prize when we get to our first anniversary, which is on the 16th of March. But anyway, thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.